So I'm just kind of pre-firing, not wasting or mag dumping, so to speak, because I don't want to be put in a position where he has the opportunity to push up on me because he knows that I'm reloading or low on ammo. Ah. So if you heard there, that is argue that is the most crucial audio cue of this entire 1v4 clutch. And the reason for that is because what is it, you guys? A21 Mayo here, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little different. So, as you can tell by the title and thumbnail, I'm going to be giving you guys an inside look into my mind in clutches, situations, and rounds in Rainbow Six Siege. It's going to be kind of like my VOD review series, as most of you know, but instead, I'm going to be explaining my thought process and why I'm doing things during those situations. I'm gonna be covering anything from a 1v5 clutch all the way down to me getting three kills in the span of three or four seconds. This video is going to be loaded with a ton of information and can definitely help you rank up and also improve your KD. So with all of that being said, let's jump into the video. Okay, so clip number one is going to be a situation where I'm solo queuing and ranked. It's a 2v5 situation with two minutes on the, on the clock. So that's a huge start already with it being a 2v5 and two minutes being on the clock still. Um, and another thing to add on to this as well is utility. Now, if this was like a situation where I'm queued with the Zofia and we're both in the same Discord or whatever it might be, then we can kind of communicate and play off of one another. But I know as of right now, I'm trying to communicate to my teammate. He's not really responding, so I'm pretty much stuck stranded in the situation. I also know that I have Diffuser, so that's one of the two ways that an attacker can win the round, right? Is either by eliminating all, eliminating all five defenders or planting the Diffuser and letting the timer run out. So as an attacker, you should always have the option to go for the plant if you need to, because if you can successfully pl uh, place the plant down, then now you're in the position where you have the advantage over the defenders versus them having the advantage for most of the round, right? So if you ever are in a situation where it's a clutch, you know, low man count, whatever it is, always make sure if you can grab diffuser and be in possession of it. So pretty much I asked him, hey, can you get the mute jammer off of the wall below? And I just, you know, asked him again. Um, you know, as you guys can see, the, the wall's muted. Um, and they also do have the mute here. Um, and I'm asking him, hey, can you go below and lounge impact below with, you know, with your launcher and get rid of the mute jammer so that way I can breach the wall. We can walk into site, apply pressure, whatever it is. Now, if you take a look at how I'm breaching the wall here, I'm doing three on the left here to be able to walk into the bomb site. And then I'm doing four here for top red and also the the far cache door and the cross like that so in a situation like this um, my main concern right now in terms of eliminating the enemies is the garage player which i believe is a valkyrie based off the sound of the mpx being shot there so that's a lot of information i know that they have a valk pulse and mute so far and i can assume that they're most likely going to have a jaeger or well, my that's a, a toss-up but eight or nine times out of ten especially in higher elo you can assume that they're going to have one of those two operators or both so right now I'm pretty confident in knowing all four uh defender uh, sorry um four out of the five defenders and if not you know that Jaeger being brought then I definitely know that they have a Valk or or Warden perhaps a um, mute and pulse. So that's three nitros to also consider for you know going for plant and stuff like that. They can go below and lounge and stock in nitro default plant locations, so I need to be careful of that. But as I said, my main concern currently is pretty much just um, getting the wall open because that's the the next step in the plan of you know what we need to do as attackers and trying to apply pressure because you would much rather want to have the breach open than having to wa walk through doorways windows and you know stuff like that up staircases because you're just pretty much putting the the defenders into um into your hands and like you know you're going to be at a huge disadvantage so i'm asking him hey get the wall you know he's not responding so i'm like okay I need to take matters into my own hands. Now, I left a fuser there just in case because I what I'm planning on doing here is going to the CC window, opening that, and seeing if I can't potentially shoot the mute jammer off um, just because that's the second best option, right? That's what I'm going to attempt to do here. So I leave the fuser to him just because I don't want to leave it stranded um, next to me because I know if I do shoot the mute jammer off that... Uh, I would be returning back to the platform and I would be able to retrieve it no matter what. If I, but if I die over here, then he has to go run over here, retrieve the diffuser, and then go back wherever he wants to go to continue out the round. So I got really lucky here. That's a great opening pick. So that's a mute. That's a nitro off of the board. Um, and also someone on, on site dead. Unfortunately, I cannot see the mute jammer. So I don't waste any time. 
if you see that I go for my objective I get a, a pick along the way and since I can't complete my objective I'm going to go back and get the diffuser because I know that if I'm just gonna waste my time here on the window it's not really gonna get me anywhere it might you know lead to me getting another pick or two but the only way I really get picks like that and don't die is if the uh, defenders keep feeding me which if they have half of a brain they won't do so I'm not going to waste my time I'm gonna try to make something out of nothing as you know the best that I can so he does end up retrieving the diffuser for me, um, which is, you know, un unideal. Um, and so here, I'm pretty much just taking gunfights. Now, if you heard just a moment ago, or just, you know, actually actively right now, you heard an impact grenade behind me. So I know that I know where two out of the four defenders are at. This might be a lot of information to take in, but these are the little things that really count in Siege and depending on how you play situations and rounds. So I'm actively fighting the pulse here, I know that, and then right there you hear an impact behind me. So as soon as I hear the impact, I know that I'm a little low on ammo because I just shot at the pulse, so I want to flash and stall him for a moment because I know that he's probably not going to sit there at the door and just eat the flash, go blind, and stuff like that. Especially after we've both just engaged to do a gunfight, he knows that I'm there, and the potential of me peeking him after flashing is pretty high, so he doesn't want to eat the flash, be blind, and then just, you know, get fried by me because he might think that I'm swinging, right? Um, and the reason I'm doing that is to stall him because the impact behind me indicates that, hey, someone's impacting probably for a claymore for blue window jump out. Um, and I don't want to be caught between the pulse on garage door and the person jumping out blue window in between that and a crossfire. Um, so I'm, as you see there, uh, I'm very correct. I, you know, was actively reloading. Um, and the Wamai wide swung, so I had to take the gunfight and cancel my reload animation. Now I have six bullets in my primary. I'm not really reading that as I'm playing here, but I automatically switch to the secondary because I know the warden behind me, or sorry, the Wamai behind me, in order for him to peek me, I know that I, I know that in order for him to peek me, um, I will get the opponent detected outside symbol, uh, sorry, text and, you know, where he's actively at with the symbol above his head. So that's active information. So I'm going to worry about the thing that I that I have uh, less information on, which is going to be the pulse because he's not going to be running out because he can peek from the safety of inside the building to me, you know, back and forth in, in and out of the uh, the the doorway here out in and outside versus the Wamai who is jumping outside and is going to be detected. Does that make sense? So I'm going, um, I'm, I'm putting my attention on the thing that I have the, that I have less information on. And as you saw there, I threw another flashbang to give me the opportunity to Reload my primary, um, and, you know, the Wamai disc caught the flash, so it gave me a little bit more of a window as well, because it has to spool up, catch the flash, and then detonate it again, since it restarts the, the, uh, the grenade um, timer. And now I'm looking to fight one of the two between the Wamai, or sorry, the, yeah, the Wamai and the Pulse. So I decided to go for the Wamai here. Not really any rhyme or reason, probably just because it's a little bit closer, and... Um, I just decided to go for that. So I injure him, finish him off, and then I immediately go after the pulse. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm actively looking at the time. I have roughly 30 seconds to kill three defenders. That gives me about 10 seconds to 11 or 12 seconds, depending, um, per defender. So I know that I'm actively doing the math in my head to allow myself to give myself a tempo and kind of um understand where i need to be in terms of time and also uh you know how many enemies i had left and i know now that i'm in a very bad position because the Sophia did unfortunately take the fuser go to the cc window and die with it very similar to what i said previously so now that i've said that i allowed the Sophia to put me in the position that i was trying to prevent does that make sense what i was just explaining a moment ago so if you heard that there's a very very slight footstep there now in Siege, there's very specific audio cues for different textures. So on concrete, it might sound like one thing. On grass, it might sound like another. On a rug, it might sound like one thing. And on metal, it sounds like something else. So I just heard the audio cue of someone walking on metal. So that immediately takes my attention away from bottom garage to top garage. And the reason it does that is because I'm going to be actively playing off of the information that is fresher than previously. And previously, we had the pulse swinging garage door, which we all know. I engaged in a gunfight with him. But since I just got the audio cue of someone walking on top rafters, I'm going to go off of that because it's a you know, much fresher, fresher information, right? So I actively look for that. Unfortunately, I was wrong. 
and there's two people here. So that is the Valkyrie that I was talking about earlier based off the MPX sound. So I kill her, and now that the Thorn is, or sorry, now that the Rafters player is shooting, I know that it's a Thorn based off gun audio. So I know it's a Pulse and Thorn, and I know where Pulse was roughly 20, 15 seconds ago, you know, whatever, whatever it was. And I know where the Thorn is at actively because she just shot, and I also just saw her a moment ago. So I'm playing the angles, pretty much face checking, baiting out for information because I don't have enough time to drone here. I really don't. By the time I go through the animation of throwing the drone, getting on my drone, I'm going to burn roughly two to three seconds, which I cannot afford to waste. So I pretty much need to use my face and my body to gather information and then react off of it whenever I get the information to my advantage, which is exactly what I do here. The um, Thorn is walking back and forth between Raptors. She commits to the far right side. And I know once she does that, I can cut her off because she's swinging out, or sorry, in while I'm swinging in, if that makes sense. She's swinging out of an, of an angle while I'm swinging in. So I'm going, I'm going to push her and push her back into Raptors as far as I can, which as you can see here on the frame, um, she's actively doing. So R3, she sits there. Now, as that's happening, I get shot at by the pulse. Now, this is a lot of stimulation to um, probably a lot of players. But over time, you kind of learn what to zone out and what to zone in in terms of information. So I know that the pulse is trying to wall bang me or shoot me through this wall be just based off the tracers. I've played the game so much that I know, okay, these tracers are coming from this area. So I know that he's shooting me from here. General, general you know, uh, direction, which is pretty accurate. Um, so let me see if I can get a frame. So as you see there... Um, you see this little symbol here, which is a lot of information that tells me which direction he's shooting me uh, from, shooting at me from. Then you see some tracers, uh, which are like little like gray streaks that go through the air. That gives you a lot of information. For example, uh, if I do three um, things here. So if tracers are coming up like this, right, you know someone is below you. If tracers are, you know, straight like this, they're on the, the same level of you as you or, you know, pretty close to it. And if they're if they're coming um, up to you, then, you know, someone's below you. So that's a lot of information just based off how they sit in the air and uh, how you can react and play off of that information. But nonetheless, I kill the thorn um, and I'm not worried about the pulse, so to speak, because I'm not trying to spaz out because I have the thorn in front of me and I need to fight her because I know where she's at and I also know that work actively engaged into a gunfight if the pulse is bottom garage and shoots me while i'm trying to shoot the thorn then that's fine no matter what if i try to shoot the pulse or the thorn either way i'm going to die to one or the other i can't shoot two people at once so i'm going to shoot the target that i know i have more solid information on and you know is directly in front of my face and my crosshairs on okay so huge audio cue there i don't know if you guys heard this but that is the audio cue of someone dropping off of something so, right there, I don't know if you heard that. I can play it one more time. One out four remaining. So there, you heard, like, a. it's hard to describe, but that's the audio cue of someone dropping off of an object. So that tells me, if you guys know Lounge pretty well, there's a lip um, next to the staircase, directly on the other side of the wall, if this is the staircase or so, something like along those lines. There's a little drop down just to the right of that. So I know that this pulse is somewhere in this general area in that circle. So I know that he is pretty close to the door. So I'm going to cross and then immediately start pre-aiming just because I know that how, how close he can be. It's remaining. So as you saw there, I checked here just in case he was prone because I did hear the audio cue in that general area there. Like I said, the little drop off lip um, is where I heard that audio cue from. And then um, just a moment ago, or just a second ago rather, you heard a little shuffle just to the left of me through the wall. One out four remaining. So the audio cue is dropping there, remaining. and then right around here, you hear him shuffling, shuffling. Talk to him. Oh. And then he's swinging, I'm actively swinging. I know that I have the advantage of him being stuck in a corner, and there was roughly six to seven seconds left. So I knew that I had enough time to confidently pre-aim and swing. I didn't have to sprint into the angle and then ADS, you know, you know, out of the sprinting animation, I could pre-aim that entire um, angle as I swung. So that way I'm just one step closer to the gunfight versus me sprinting, then ADSing and then shooting. I can just pre-aim, you know, track the angle and then swing. 
um, already aimed down sight. So that is the the 1v4. I guess that was technically a 2v4, 1v4 clutch. Or sorry, 2v5, 1v4 clutch. Whatever, 1v5 clutch. We'll just chalk it up to that because that Zoe did shit all. So yeah, basically what I did here was I played off of the freshest, freshest information I had to my availability. Um, I eliminated angles based off my position so that way I didn't get shot my backside or front. You know, you always want to... Eliminate as many angles as you can in whatever situation you might be in, just so that way your your levels of danger go down, right? The less angles you have exposed to you based off where enemies are, the, you know, the less danger you're in. I mean, it's just it's just how that works. So that is the the one v five clutch. Now let's move on to a one v four. Okay, so here is the one v four clutch. Um, currently it's a four four. Let's just assess four four. Two minutes and eight seconds left on the clock. Um, now, in a situation like this on defense, it's going to be a little differently. You're going to count your utility a little bit more, I would say, just because you are going to need to stall for the plant. So if we look at what we have, we have a smoke and a mirror. So that's potentially three smokes and one nitro cell, resulting in four um, pieces of utility for a plant denial situation. Um, and we also have 30 seconds to burn with the smokes if used properly, more like 35 to 40 seconds if the smoke knows what he's doing. Um, but either way, just a little assessment there, just so that way you guys can kind of understand the situation that I'm putting myself in and why I do the things that I'm about to do. Open server hatch. What am I not? Server hatch is open. Server Where did I even kill? Open. Did I kill Ash? How did server I kill Ash? Server hatch is open. So as you can see here, I'm pretty adamant on, adamant on holding this angle. Now, there's a reason that I'm doing this. As you hear, my teammate's calling server hatches open. Uh, she sounds pretty stressed out. So I'm holding this angle because I know that they're going to go server side most likely. They open both ad uh, open hatches, and you'll hear a call out uh, of that um, come out in just a moment. But the reason I know that they open both server uh, admin hatches, or sorry, open hatches, Jesus, is because of the layering of the audio cue of the Habana pellets detonating. So if we go back here, you can hear... Um, two different sets of Habanas detonate. So right there, you hear one set shot, and then here you, you there you heard the second set shot. So you know that this Habana is going to detonate um, and and explode in tandem both uh, both admin hatches, right? So they're opening both hatches. So we need to establish some sort of angles off of the bomb site because once those hatches are open, it's going to make bomb site a, a hell in a cell. Correct? If you guys know bank you know admin hatches or so why do i keep saying that open hatches being open uh it makes it very difficult to defend the bomb site unless you're in server or garage holding long angle or on main stairs potentially for a retake which most of the time on bank you have to do as a defender is you have to retake open area and gain hatch control open server hatch what am i not server hatch is open so server hatch even kill? calling kill ash? opening server hatch you can hear the layering effect of the x kairos pellets being uh spooling up and ready to detonate how did server i hatch is so open. as you hear there it's much louder than one set of habanas being detonated it's actually two so that's information that i know i want to have to ask both open problem. area hatches are open then my teammate confirms both open area hatches are open now, if you just hear a moment ago there, this is how important audio cues are in this game. So learning, you know, every little audio cue is important. You don't need to necessarily know all of them, but knowing as many as you can is very crucial, especially if you're a solo queue player. And the reason for this is because audio cues of utility, the weight of operators, the, the sound of uh, operators' guns, whatever audio cue it is, makes or breaks situations. So as you hear okay, here, the right there, you heard this this sound which is the sound of nomads air jab being shot um and that tells me okay just by process of elimination and past experience that's going to be on the double door here just leading into open area from the metal detectors or beepers directly in front of me so i know that i know that there's going to be an air jab on the double door leading into open area so i need to be very very cautious of that when i do approach that area is there open they've drawn me in server so as you see oh, here, I get a call, they drone me in server, and usually if a defender drones, or sorry, if an attacker drones a defender, um, they're going to react off of that information almost immediately because it's fresh and accurate. So I immediately get aggressive when I know that they're going, the, the attackers are going to get aggressive on my teammate Mira. Um, and as you see there, I check 
and hold this angle here. And then I sweep as I walk up the staircase. I check angles. I check angles. I'm checking E1 here, which, by the way, if you guys don't know, this little corner here and the elevator and things like that is called E1. Um, and the reason I'm not too worried about open area to my right is because I know that they just air jabbed it. So I know that they're going to be playing off of a little bit of a safety net. Now, they could still swing, but I'm going to, you know, gather information on the areas that I have less information on than more, more than most. So as you see, uh, I clear the angle to my left. Um, I kind of did a poor job of checking the deep angle, but it is what it is. The book is half held. Now, I face check there. And the reason I'm face checking is because they just established server control with a minute 45 left. Both hatches are open, and it's a 3v4. So I know that the attackers are going to be getting a little bit more aggressive here just because of how much of an advantage they have and momentum. I'm going to come watch this hatch drop. Okay. So no one peeks me there. Um, and then I start pieing the room. So if you guys don't know what pieing is, I just kind of take angle by angle, face check, clear angles, and then, you know, wh whatever it is I, I need to clear, I do clear here. So I check I close, far, all that stuff. And then I go back to establishing this angle because I didn't see anyone when I swept the room just a moment ago. Heard audio. There's someone up there. So I hear someone stepping and stepping, so I'm preparing myself for a gunfight based off the footsteps. I see someone, unfortunately, I do not kill them. I check behind me as I reload. So if you heard there, that's the audio cue of someone dropping. Just as I said in the previous clutch, different audio cues happen on different textures and footsteps and stuff like that. Same things apply. Th same thing applies to someone dropping. Uh, you know, that Habana was dropping into carpet on the bomb site versus the pulse. Last situation, dropping onto concrete. So, a little bit different of an audio cue there, but nonetheless, that is the audio cue of someone dropping. So, I know that. I hear that. I heard a second one. And keep in mind, I know the air jab is here. And since I walked so close to the door, I heard the air jab and I pretty much knew where it was. But I still felt it out based off of audio on depth of where this air jab was. Because it could be, you know, very close to me. It could be on the metal detector. But since I didn't hear it louder and louder as I approached the door... Next to me, I knew it was on the other side of the door. So okay, what I do here that. is I use my impact immediately. I don't even look at the impact. I throw it, and then I immediately turn left because I need to prepare for the gunfight because my teammates are dying on the bomb site, and I also hear the attackers actively dropping on the bomb site too, so I know it's not a good situation. So I check my close, and immediately I start pre-aiming where I expect the, the next attacker to be, just so that way I'm one st uh, step closer to being ready for a gunfight as i mentioned last round um sorry last clutch situation this is a huge skill set that you guys need to implement and changes uh the outcomes and, and drastically um changes uh, uh you know how many gunfights you will win just by pre-aiming and being ready for a gunfight proper head um headshot level with your pre-aim being ads things like that putting your crosshair in areas where you think an attacker is going to be based off of information so I clear the room. I know that the room is clear. Now I'm not ADSing because I don't want to get hollow blocked. So that's why I'm not ADSing actively in this situation because I don't know if there's an attacker ratting in a corner or whatever it might be. So as I said previously, I was fighting for hatch control. Now that I have it, I have a lot of advantage and I need to hold on to this as much as I can. I didn't even see. So immediately, got... I know the room is clear. I immediately look through the hatch, no hesitation. I kill the buck on the bomb site, and I start actively I looking look for more and more picks. So if you saw there, I killed the Habana. Now with that Habana, I also got Diffuser. If you guys didn't see it, I'll play it just no. I didn't even very see briefly her once job. again. So I kill the buck. I actively start looking for more and more kills. I do not stop. I do not hesitate because in a one v three situation, I need to eliminate as many attackers as I can, just because. I don't want to be stuck. I don't want. I don't want to be stuck between an attacker walking up my main stairs and retaking open area on me, and also attackers being down down in the basement holding my hatch drop. Right. So I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be stuck between a rock and a hard place, no matter what. So I need to eliminate as many attackers as I can, based off of you know how fresh the information is. You know of them dropping in the bomb site. So as you see here, I kill Habana. Um, and I dropped the, the tan briefcase diffuser on her. So that is a lot of information that I have and advantage that I have off the bat like, like that. Not even half Now, I'm hearing footsteps to my left. I'm actively looking there. I keep hearing footsteps, keep hearing footsteps. I hear footsteps to my left and to my right. So I know roughly where both attackers are. So I kill the guy in the mirror based off audio. 
I eliminate the angle actively while I peek the mirror. So that way this guy to the left that I'm hearing his footsteps into the bomb site, you know, like near this doorway here that leads into CC and uh, the, the sprinkler hallway there. Um, I eliminate that angle so that way when I only, or so, so that way I know that I can only be shot by one or the other, depending on how I position myself and how I allow these angles to be um, used against well, me. One's going up main stairs, up main stairs. So great calls by my teammate there going up main stairs. Now, the reason that I drop is because I know that I have diffuser control and the only three ways for him to get, or sorry, I get, uh, there's multiple ways for him to get to me, but the primary three ways, the cricket, quickest routes for him to get to me are the two hatches from open area and main stairs. He could come behind me um, and you kind of see what I do to um, play around with that. But my teammate calls main stairs. I do not hesitate. I do not care because I have diffuser control and I know that either me or the diffuser is his objective. And if I can put both of them in the same area, I can protect the diffuser um, and me at the same time, then I know his objective of completing the round is going to be much harder. So I drop while reloading, not a second wasted there, emotion. As, as you see there, I immediately sprint away because I know that if he drops in the sprinkler hatch, the far one there, he has to come to me through a doorway or rotate. And if he drops this hatch here, I can hold his drop and pretty much shoot his feet before he even sees me. So it's a win-win situation for me, nonetheless. And if I absolutely need to, I can retake open area once again by going up blue stairs going back to open okay so my teammates calling he's going back to open i reposition here just for a moment now if you see here i'm doing a sweep of server why am i doing a sweep of server because of enemy drones it's happened to me time and time again where i get yellow pinged on a drone i have no idea i'm getting called out i get swung pre-fired whatever it is and i lose the round in gunfight because of it so this is an important skill set especially in clutches if you have a moment of breathing room use it so that way you can, you know, sweep for drones, utility, claymores, air jabs, whatever it might be. Yeah. So as you heard there, that is the audio cue of him dropping once again. For you guys who might not know what that audio cue sounds like. I swing. Unfortunately, he's not in the position that I was expecting him to be in. But nonetheless, you know, I, I, I escape with my life. Now, pretty much what I do is I'm playing cat and mouse here. I am... Wanting to put him in a position where he feels comfortable enough to grab the diffuser because I know where it's at, right? I know it's in front of the shield where Havana died. So I know he has a few more steps in order to go where I last saw him to the diffuser, which is what he's most likely going to go for. So I'm just kind of pre-firing, not wasting or mag dumping, so to speak, because I don't want to be put in a position where he has the opportunity to push up on me because he knows that I'm reloading or low on ammo. So if you heard there, that is argue that is the most crucial audio cue of this entire 1v4 clutch and the reason for that is because this nomad just hit the electrified mirror wall. So if you guys don't know, whenever an attacker hits an electrified surface, they kind of grunt or moan, and that's what you heard there. And I know that the only way for you to get the audio cue of that to be triggered is by electrification. So I know exactly where she is, and you'll see me play off of that information in just a moment. So as you see there, I, I know exactly where she is, but I don't know how far she is. Uh, you know, deep, whether she, you know, straight to the left or right after she got electrified. So I'm checking the angles, checking the angles. And then I, you know, see that she's not on common cover here, like the head glitch on the bomb corners. And then I wide swing out, you know, when I hear her as well. No, but like, well, she's Unfortunately... I thought that she was deep into Red Hall already based off audio cue of footsteps. I was very wrong, and luckily she missed um, her shots on me. So I prone, go for cover, impact to mask sound, and also just stall a little bit. And then immediately I shift my attention to the door because that's my next area of threat. Since I am prone, she can no longer see me, so I don't need to worry about the rotate to my right until I hear her try to walk through the rotate. I still hear her red hall there. I'm still holding here. So what I'm doing here is a skill set that is very important that you guys should always try to implement is I'm using both sets of senses that I have to my avail availability through the game. So in Siege, you only have two senses that you can use as a human being. That's sight and sound. So I'm visually looking at something, gathering information, putting my crosshair there ready for the gunfight. And I'm audibly paying attention to the rotate and where she is based off of her position. Does that make sense? So I don't want to position myself to a point where I'm looking at the rotate 
and audibly listening for the door because I would be exposing myself to two angles at once versus me eliminating the red angle here, which is angle two by going prone and then looking at angle one with my crosshair. So the skill set of listening for one area and gathering information and then looking at another and gathering information while eliminating as many angles as possible. I see the air jab, I shoot it as she's shooting to mass sound and just kind of, you know, um, play around with her shooting so that way I can mask the sound a little bit of uh, of me shooting the air jab because when you shoot an electrified piece of utility, it kind of makes like a sparking sound and that could give her an advantage of understanding that, hey, I can walk through the door now. I hear her sprint very far away. Now a very subtle audio cue. I don't know if you guys picked up on that, but two things. She sprinted that entire time. If she were to go through the rotate from red hole into lockers, she would not be in the sprinting animation the entire time, right? Because she would have to crouch in order to gain access into lockers, and I heard her sprint the entire time. So I know that she's going through vault, or sorry, cash through vault into the site window, most likely. Um, and also, you heard her walking on rug. So if I go back here, just a moment. And now I'm going to pause it. Listen to the difference of audio cue between her walking on concrete in the gold room and cash versus walking into deep red cash, like the you know the area where all the cash stacks are at um, on the tables on the you know on the carpet or rug. Shoot the air jab. So do you hear how her audio cues of the, her footsteps go from a little bit uh, drier and a little bit more crisp? to a little bit damper and a little bit softer. I don't know if you guys picked up on that. You know, it'd be best to, you know, wear headphones with, with you know, with uh, me explaining this. But that's, you know, how important audio is in this game. It tells me positioning just based off how someone's running and where I hear them running on. Or what I hear them running on, rather. So as soon as that registers in my head, I immediately go to this door and establish the angle because I know she's already committed deep enough. And if she doubles back, back into gold, um... It's going to take her, you know, a few seconds to do that. So I have a window of opportunity here. Oh. So she, okay. you know, as I predicted, I was very, very accurate. She went all the way through uh, gold here around vault and then through uh, through vault. And as I said earlier, you know, this rotate is crouched based on previ pre previous information of me seeing it. So I know that she can't sprint, you know, fully through the rotate. Um, and also the rug and the carpet audio cue changes that as well. I hope that makes sense if you guys are understanding what I'm saying. Like, she can't sprint through the rotate, and since she was sprinting the whole time, I knew where she was going, is what I'm saying. So I'm just playing off of audio there. It's a little late, but nonetheless. Now, I position myself in a, in a, in a position where I eliminate as many angles as I can, and I also make the angles that she's trying to reach me on as deep as I possibly can. Now, I kind of mess up there based off audio. It sounded like she doubled back, um... And the reason I thought that she did is because of the hole here. So if you guys don't know, that's a pretty decent sized hole. And that's a hole big enough for audio to propagate through. So I thought she she ran down this hallway to the server door and then ran back and was going to come through the window here. But luckily, uh, you know, she was sprinting the whole time and I just reacted just in the nick of time. You know, as you saw there, how I was reacting. And then I went back to what I was hearing previously. But nonetheless, that's uh, the 1v4 situation. A lot of uh, information there that I probably went way too in depth on if you guys are enjoying the video so far make sure you guys leave a like um and let me know if you guys you know like this in depth uh, of an explanation because i went really really in depth on that one um and let me know if that helps but nonetheless let's go on to situation number three okay crucial information there so my teammate's calling one zine hall 2v2 on site that's a lot of information so to add on to that if you guys don't know where z hall is it is the freezer area in uh in oregon um it's the hallway with the double 90 corners leading from classroom to the freezer hallway if you guys know what that where, where that is the reason it's called z is because if this is a uh, classroom here here's classroom doorway here's the hallway bada bing bada boom something like this and then here's uh here's top freezer stairs there uh, it's called z because this looks like a z obviously or backward z rather 
Um, so that's why it's called Z. That is the call out that my teammate is actively calling. And what I'm doing there is kind of guesstimating, you know, if that person were to rotate up white stairs, how long would it take? Not too long. It's pretty much in the general area. By the time I get into attic, they'll probably already be top white stairs. And if they go up main stairs, how long will that take? That'll probably take seven to 10 seconds for them to sprint from Z hallway all the way up to trophy or, you know, attic and in my general area. So I know for sure that I have a, not a decent window of opportunity for a 2v2 and trades on the bomb site between my teammate and I, but um, th there is still a window of opportunity there, just not as large as I would like to like it to be. So there I pretty much used a nade just to kind of see if I can get a pick because playing, playing attic is such a common area to play um, and playing close there. Uh, especially after we open the wall and they know that we open the wall, like they're going to be pressuring Attic somewhat. So I'm just using that nade to maybe see if I can get a pick. Oh, he's close. Wow. So right. I'm trying to support my teammate because I know that she is Attic um, T2, like on the breach that we just opened. So I'm just trying to support her and see if I can't catch someone lacking. Um, but if you guys notice what's going on here, so um, let's just go off of guns oh. and other things. So if we look at this portion of the uh, screen here, you can see that that just got opened and that's mute shotgunning this wall from Trophy. And the reason I know it's from Trophy is because of the debris falling. You see that piece of debris there and that piece of debris there, very, very small details. But since it's flying towards me, I know that he's in Trophy because it's the shell is going to be shooting the, the wall. Like, like if you were to, you know, let's say this line here is the wall and you shotgun the wall like this, right? The debris is going to follow the trajectory of where the bullets are coming from. Does that make sense? So that tells me that that trophy, uh, that that mute is in trophy, and then this Wamai is also in attic because he just fried my teammate who was you know trying to peek attic. So I know where two out of the three defenders are. Very very solid information. He's close. Wow. So my right teammate side. calls close. I now pretty left. much know that just based off audio. You know how she died in the and understanding that angle. Uh, I immediately refrag that guy because he peeks into me. And the reason I was holding this angle so tightly and, and I was so stern on holding it is because of the time. Uh, a minute 18, you know, a minute 20 pretty much with um, Diffuser. I'm sitting pretty well in a 1v3. I mean, obviously it could be better. It could not be a 1v3, but either way, I'll take it. So I, I can afford to burn a couple seconds. And a crucial thing that a lot of people don't do is they don't allow the enemy to make the mistake for them, so that way you capitalize on it. Does that make sense? So I pretty much allowed the enemy to make a mistake for me, so that way I can punish them for making said mistake. So I immediately react off of this because I know where Mute is. I don't know where Kate is, so I'm taking the 50-50 of wherever this Kate is. He could be an attic, he could not be. doesn't really matter to me because I'm, you know, already ready for the gunfight. I pretty much understand what this Mute is going to do. I know... You know that he's gonna nitro over the wall, which is what you see um, him do in just a moment. So the Cade walks in. He, I, I see him go through the injure animation. I'll play this one more time, pretty slowly. So as you see here, the Cade goes through the in, injure animation, um, and then as I'm doing that, I hear the nitro rip. So the nitro has Velcro on it. I hear it rip. And I'm immediately taking my attention here because nitro in an open hole like this, I know what's going to happen. Like, I'm not stupid. I've seen it before, whatever it is. Um, and I know that's the only threat that he can oppose to me because I know where he is, right? Like, the walls are reinforced. He's not, you know, in attic or close door. I know where he is. So, the like, the only threat that he has towards me is his nitro cell. So, I'm not worried about anything else. I know where the last guy is. I know what he's doing. So, I, I kill the... Um, well, I jump in, I kill the Cade directly after, I'm immediately ready for the gunfight. Um, and then I shoot the Nitro because I know that the, that's what the Mute is going to be doing. And since I know where he is based off where he just threw the Nitro from, I can um, afford to shoot this Malusi and turn around because I know he has no threat to me for a solid three second window, I would say. Maybe that's a little giving, maybe a two second window, whatever it might be. But I know for a fact I have an opportunity to turn around and shoot this Malusi so that way I have free range of my mobility. Oh my God, so there's that. that. My teammate calls out one nade, which is huge. So 
What I'm doing here is pretty much just applying pressure on the pre-fire because I hear the mute rotate. I hear him stutter stepping close door. Um, and I'm just pre-firing to let him know like, hey, I know you're, you're there, so don't try to push me. Uh, that's kind of like a scare tactic, kind of like a peacock um, showing his, uh, his spread of his feathers kind of thing, so to speak. Uh, I'm just letting the mute that I know that he's there. So that way he doesn't feel comfortable in pushing me as I try to reload. So I reload there. Now I, I use my nade here and start cooking it because I know that he's close door and I want to try to um, uh, try to nade him since I know that he's close door. Does that make sense? I just hear him, you know, on the other side of the, 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 the door there. Now I, I stop because I mean, there's Wamai there, so. When Wamai was playing there previously, I heard him throw Wamai's down, so I just look around, successfully shoot the Wamai, and now I go for the nade. Now, a mistake that I made here is I'm playing far too close. Um, I'm playing far, far too close for the mute because I know that he has a shotgun, you know, based off him shooting the top of the attic wall open, and also he's just mute. So I, I allowed myself to be a little bit too favorable for him, but if you pay attention to how I'm taking the angle, it's very crucial. So if we kind of look at, you know, how I'm taking the angle, let's say this line here is directly from me to the doorway. If I were out here, Jesus Christ, excuse me, holy smokes. If I were out here on this X a little bit wider into the door, a little bit more of a 90 degree angle, the mute wouldn't need to swing for as long, um, which means that I wouldn't have the opportunity to cook my nade for as long. Does that make sense? So I'm making him swing into me further and further into the angle, so that way I have more time to cook my grenade. So as you see here, I use momentum with my grenade, throw it through the doorway, and as I'm doing that, either way, if he's close doorway or not, I'm crossing with my grenade, so I know that he can't be close doorway, and if he is, then I just kill him with my nade. So I cross with the nade, there, he sees me, he shotguns me, now I know that he has a shotgun out, since he just shot at me with the shotgun. So I swing immediately because I know that I don't want to be put in a position where I'm at a disadvantage because of um, him swinging into me and walking into me with the shotgun. It only takes one pump pretty much for him to kill me as a Mav with, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a one armor, three speed, or I guess one health, three speed now. And I'm also at 40 HP. So I'm, I'm you know, a shotgun um, away at a pretty far distance, you know, from death. Uh, so I don't want to give him the advantage of swinging on me and also putting me in kids room where it's pretty close quarters So yeah, that's I mean that's pretty much the situation Um, I, I, I went from a one I love Mike bro. Mike's the best Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the situation Okay, I went way too in depth a lot more in depth than I definitely planned on going in that video But if you guys enjoyed it, let me know by leaving a like or a comment down below in, in the uh, comment section this is something a little different from my normal content. I kind of wanted to describe my thought process and clutches and situations and rounds. And also let me know if you guys want to see more clutches like this or just more situations in general, maybe with some team play. Whatever you guys want to see in this series, I'm calling it kind of inside the mind of a champion, so to speak. So yeah, if you guys want to see this more on the, on, on the channel, let me know by either leaving a like. That's a great feedback for me or by leaving a comment on the video and also doing both of those things definitely helps out with the YouTube algorithm and allows it to perform better and reach larger audiences. Now, if you guys are interested in, you know, in-depth explanations like this with my coaching service, I do live coaching with all of my clients and I'm also accessible through my DM service on Patreon. The link to that is in the description. And yes, I do coach console players and I've helped over 250 clients and they've all seen improvement. So if you guys are interested in that, my coaching service, there's a link to the Patreon down below in the description, as well as links to all of my social media. So if you guys want to keep up to date with me, you know, on my Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, as well as my Twitch, I stream there daily. All my links to everything is down below in the description. Well, all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I'll catch you guys in the next one.